So we're still trying to figure out the really what the, the crux of optical behavior is. And at this point, we know we know enough. Uh, we've asked enough questions to kind of lead us to believe that this model we've used uh, a little bit and this has helped us out where the mod the atom as a sphere is is insufficient so it was it was useful for some mechanical analogies uh, for some other purposes you know even if you extend that out to a string of 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 spheres you know as you do for a polymer i often just draw it as a squiggly line or something it still didn't really explain the interaction um with with light or in fact really with any electromagnetic radiation so we need to get inside we need to crack this thing open to get inside the sphere All right so let's do that <clears throat> and I think that uh, we can proceed fairly quickly um, assuming a certain level of background knowledge so Inside the atom, we've got a nucleus, and the nucleus contains protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which are uh, a correction, which are yeah neutral in charge, as the name implies, right? Neutral charge. But this is most of the mass of the atom, essentially all of it. I mean, a thousand times or so lighter than that is the electron. So most of the mass of the atom comes from the nucleus. And then orbiting around the nucleus are electrons. And the electrons have a negative charge. And in fact, that's the negative, that charge that I'm referring to here, this positive, this positive charge, negative charge, these are the same quantity, but op opposite signs. And um, those are equal to 1.602 uh, times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the, the fundamental charge. fundamental charge and the nucleus particularly in fact the number of protons is what determines the element it's like the social insurance number for the element so sometimes we even refer to the proton number um, or the atomic number Okay, I actually kind of like the name proton number, um, depending on where you are exactly, uh, atomic number is probably a little bit more commonly used, but they, they're generally understood uh, by, by, I think, most people that are referring to the same thing, and we use the, um, the letter Z, uppercase letter Z, to, to uh, denote the atomic number. So that determines the element. Um, for example, carbon has an atomic number of six, and that's carbon. You can also have um, a differing number of uh, neutrons, and that can create, what that does, that creates what we call isotopes, differing number of neutrons, so they'll have a different mass but they've got the same number of protons, the same proton number, uh, but they have a different mass. And so a different number of neutrons creates um, uh, different, uh, different isotopes. So an example of that would be um, carbon-13. Okay, well, it's carbon, so it's got to have six protons. Otherwise, it's not carbon. But if it's got a mass of 13, 
these mass units, in fact sometimes they're called atomic mass units, and it's going to have seven neutrons. <clears throat> and the, the first look at the, the, the atom that we're going we're gonna to do, which is somewhat useful, has a central nucleus, a central nucleus, with electrons in sp specific um, shells. Oh my goodness. Let me try that one more time. Specific shell. I'm trying to get these things to be kind of concentric. Um, these shells surrounding the nucleus. And you could have an electron in, um, in one of those um, shells, electron in a uh, shell, okay? And the, the the model that we're looking at now is, is really, if this was technically, if this was just, just hydrogen, this is called the, the Bohr model. Um, let me go and make this, okay. The Bohr model. After Niels Bohr. And it has the central nucleus with electrons orbiting in shells. And one of the, the, the features of this model is that the distance of the electron from the nucleus is limited to specific values. So n equals 1, n equals 2. I, uh, <laughs> look at that. I erased a space and then I realized I didn't make it big enough to fit my writing in n equals 3. Um, so these are these, these different shells, different distances, but they are defined. This is an important feature. Defined um, distance from the nucleus. Distance from nucleus. Okay, and so this model is, it's, I mean, it's not entirely correct. There's there's limitations to it. There's problems with it. But again, it's a model, and so we'll see. It's actually useful for um, for certain um, discussions. In fact, one thing that's actually quite uh, quite used it's quite useful for discussing is what if you could cause an electron to move from this shell here closest to the nucleus to um, a shell at a further distance. Or, in fact, you could raise the question of what if I wanted to move here, halfway between n equals 2 and n equals 3? Well, the Bohr model tells us, because these are defined distances, that you can't do that. You can't move partway. And, in fact, it tells us that you have to put some energy in to the system to cause an electron to be excited. So that would be uh, so-called excited electron. And that was energy in. How could you put energy in? Well, you could put energy in in the form of electromagnetic radiation. E equals hc over lambda. So you could put some radiation in, excite an electron. And the other thing that you could do is if you had an atom where you had excited an electron, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little kind of hole there to show. Actually, I'm going to take that away. It might be confusing. So here's the electron, and this is the excited. It's having so much fun. It's excited. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it, it's the excited electron. It's been uh, increased in energy level. It's in this temporary high energy at n equals two, and it's only temporary. It's going to it's going to want to drop down to achieve uh, a lower energy. And so what happens is it drops back down, and it's only this specific value, right? We say the these defined distances. What that tells us is that. Another way of saying that is that the energy is quantized. Quantized. 
quantize means that it can only take on specific values. Letter grades, A, B, C, D, are quantized, whereas percentage is more continuous. So if this excited electron drops back down, it gives off energy. Okay? And because it's quantized, it's a little packet of energy, if you will. It's a packet. It's like a specific quantity of energy. We call that a photon. So the, the Bohr model um, is useful for discussing certain things, particularly transitions in energy levels to either give off if an electron drops down to, to lower energy, or if energy goes in to excite an electron. The Bohr model is useful for describing those, but it also has its limitations, which we'll get to uh, shortly.